Okay, this is part two of, chap of uh, chapter 10 on cell division. We're going to start in here with homologous chromosomes and sister chromatids. Now, homologous, homo means same. So homologous chromosomes are chromosomes that are essentially the same. They are chromosomes with the same size, they have the same structure, and they have genes for the same characteristic. Now where they can differ is that the expression of these genes may differ. Now within this homologous pair, one homolog came from mom, the other homolog is a copy of the chromosome you got from dad. And when we talk about homologous chromosomes, we are always talking about a diploid or higher ploidy level. You cannot have homologous chromosomes in a haploid because in a haploid you have only one chromosome from each homologous pair. Okay, sister chromatids, these are exact copies of each other and they are the two identical strands of a single chromosome. Now, another term that we need to be familiar with is the term centromere. Centromere gets its name because it's usually in the center of the chromosome, but not always. So the centromere is a constricted area on the chromosome, and it's a dense area that holds the two sister chromati chromatids together. Okay. Now another structure is the kinetochore. With the term kinetochore, think connector. So the kinetochore is a part of the centromere, basically it's on the surface of the centromere, and this is where the spindle fibers, or these microtubules, attach to the kinetochores. Okay, now the spindle fibers, or spindle apparatus, these are the microtubules that radiate out from either end of the cell, attach to the chromosomes, and then pull the chromosomes through the cell during cell division. Here's a little rough diagram showing these ideas. So let's look around here. Now then, we have, let's start in with this one right here. We have this single double-stranded chromosome. This thing is not a pair of chromosomes. This is one chromosome. It is double-stranded. Now each individual strand is called a chromatid. The two strands of this double-stranded chromosome are called sister chromatids. And the sister chromatids are exact duplicates of each other. Notice if we have a gene for dark hair on one chromatid, there is a gene for dark hair on the other chromatid. Okay, now this chromosome and this one right here form a homologous pair. These are homologs. So they are the same structure, same size, and they both have genes controlling hair color, but this one the gene codes for red hair. Over here, the gene codes for dark hair. Down here, these two would be a homologous pair. So, notice they're, they're alike. The centromere is up here near the end. Okay, most, some of the time, the uh, chromosomes are double-stranded, but most of the time, the chromosomes are single-stranded. So, these two right here would represent a homologous pair. These two right here would represent a homologous pair. Notice that within a homologous pair, one of the chromosomes is a copy of the chromosome that came from mom, the other is a copy of the chromosome that came from dad. So you see that right here, you see that right over here. Okay. Now, Here's our kinetochore, spindle fiber, centromere structure. So this right here would be a chromatid coming down through here. Here's a chromatid coming down through here. This is our centromere holding the two chromatids together. And then part of that centromere or here on the surface of the centromere, we have what's called a kinetochore or think of it as connector. And then the spindle fibers are these strands of microtubule proteins that radiate out from either end of the cell, latch onto the chromosomes here at the kinetochores on the centromere. Okay. okay, here's a diagram from your textbook. First over here on the left, you see this micrograph of a chromosome, 
and again there is a fuzzy appearance to the uh, chromosome because of the way it's structured with the uh, uh, looping and condensing of the DNA and then here's this constricted area right here which would be the centromere. Now over here on the diagram you see the same thing again you have the two sister chromatids you have the centromere you have the blue discs there would represent the kinetochore this line is going to the wrong region this line from the word kinetochore should go to the blue disc and then you have these microtubules attached to that okay let's look at the cell cycle and mitosis uh, the cell cycle this is a set of events from one cell division to the next now the stages that we have in the cell cycle are interphase and mitosis or the M phase. Interphase, as you can see down here, is subdivided into G1, S, and G2. And then with the M phase we have mitosis and cytokinesis. Mitosis is the time during which the, the nucleus of the cell is dividing. Cytokines cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm or division of the cell itself. Okay, here's a diagram from your textbook showing this idea. Notice that the M phase or mitosis takes up just a very small part of this cycle. Then the bulk of the cycle is interphase. We have G1, S, G2. Okay, S stands for synthesis. G1 and G2 stand for the first and second gap. Okay, here's a diagram showing the idea if we start right here at the beginning of mitosis. We have this cell and we have double-stranded chromosomes. Now if this was human instead of one chromosome we would have 46 of these double-stranded chromosomes. During mitosis the two sister chromatids are separated from each other and go into different what are now called daughter cells or resulting cells. Again if this was human we would now have 46 single-stranded chromosomes here, 46 single-stranded chromosomes down here. Okay, let's follow this cell back into interphase. When this goes back into interphase, the chromosome, short, thick, uh, very compact, tightly coiled structure, it uncoils back to chromatin. That's why I have this drawn out as long, thin thread right here. So, during the G1 stage, all the, uh, all the chromosomes are uncoiled as chromatin, so if this was human, we would have 46 strands of chromatin packed into that nucleus. Then, as we go into the S phase, S stands for synthesis. What it's going to synthesize is that sister chromatid. It's going to synthesize new DNA, thus the dotted line up here. We're forming a new identical strand to this original strand. Okie dokie. So we go into G2 phase. G2 we now have double stranded chromosomes that are uncoiled in the form of chromatin and we get biochemical changes preparing, uh, preparing the cell to go into mitosis. Okay. Now in terms of time Let's just start in right here and the cell has just divided. We go into G1. The cell can set in the G1 stage for a matter of days. It might be years or it could be your entire lifetime. For example, uh, your, uh, your neurons and your skeletal muscle, those cells do not divide again. So basically they will set there for the rest of your life without uh, dividing and those cells are said to be in the G sub O stage. That's not go, that is G sub O stage. Okay, so these cells may have sat there for a matter of days in your skin or epithelial tissues lining your digestive tract. They may have sat there for years in your liver. But when the right signal comes along for the cell to divide, it will move on from the G1 stage into the S stage, synthesis. Now normally once a cell moves into the S stage, it will go ahead and click through the rest of this cell cycle fairly rapidly. So 
the amount of time that it takes to go from the beginning of the S phase through mitosis is roughly one day, about 18 to 22 hours. Okay, mitosis itself, the actual division of the nucleus, takes about two hours in a human. Now, if we were looking at uh, fish or reptiles or you know, something besides birds and mammals where it doesn't maintain a constant body temperature, then the, the amount of time that it takes would be temperature dependent uh, with a much slower rate of cell division at, at colder temperatures, a faster rate of cell division at higher temperatures. But in us, in humans, we maintain a constant, uh, constant body temperature, so this process cell division works at a fairly constant rate. Okay, it doesn't matter how long these cells were sitting here in the G, G sub 1 stage, the rest of this process takes about the same amount of time. About a day's time to go through the rest of the process, about two hours to go through mitosis. Okay, interphase. So remember we started out dividing this cycle into interphase and mitosis. So interphase is a stage when the cell is not dividing. This is the longest stage of the cell cycle. DNA is uncoiled as chromatin. Nucleus is intact. Nucleolus is present. And there is a, uh, I'm supposed to say, a nuclear membrane that is intact and present. The substages of interphase, we have G1, S, and G2. So here during G1, gap one, this is the longest stage of interphase. So this is the longest substage of the longest stage in the cell cycle. So that means that any, any tissue you look at, most of the cells are in the G1 stage. The cell might stay in this G1 stage for just about any length of time, days, months, or years. And the DNA is in the form of single-stranded chromatin. During this time, the cells grow and new organelles are produced. We started into this stage with a uh, cell that was about half the original size and half the organelles it needed. Now the G sub O stage, this refers to cells that are permanently in the G sub 1 stage. They do not divide again. This would be things like your neurons and skeletal muscle. The S or synthesis stage, this is when the DNA replicates itself along with the histine, histine, histone proteins and it's going to produce new sister chromatids. The G2 stage, this is the gap 2. We have a double-stranded chromosome that is uncoiled as chromatin. And actually, if it was human, we'd have 46 of those. And this is where we get the production of enzymes for mitosis. OK, mitosis the stages are going to be prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Mitosis is division of the nucleus. And then we are going to get cytokinesis, which is division of the cytoplasm, thus yielding two new cells. Cytokinesis will occur during telophase in plant and animal cells. In plant and animals, we can uh, in plant and animal cells we can just regard cytokinesis as a part of telophase. But in some other organisms, like a lot of the fungi. It's very common to have mitosis without cytokinesis, and this produces multinucleate cells. Okay, so let's stop at this point, and this will conclude part two of chapter 10. Uh, for part three, we will pick up with the events of the cell cycle. Thank you.